Hello friends, welcome again. Sumit this side. And in this session, we will talk about Python language fundamentals. And also we will talk about string related operations. So two things, Python language related things. Or apart from this, Python string operations. Like how we can do operations on strings. These are the two things that we will talk about in this particular session. So let's get started without any delay. So I have my Python installed and I am right now using uh, one of the IDE, which is PyCharm. You would have installed it right in the previous session. So let's get started. So let's say uh, I have some variables, big data, let's say the big data fee variable is 800 and Let's say there are two courses, Big Data and Azure, and Azure fee is 600. So there are two courses which I offer, let's say, Big Data course and the Azure Data Engineering course, and this is $800 and this is $600. Now let's say for my Big Data course, let's say I get 20 enrollments. So I will just say Big Data enrollments equal to 20. That means 20 people are enrolling for my big data course and for my Azure course, let's say, I mean, these are just made up numbers. This is 40. So 40 people bought my Azure course, 20 people bought my big data course and the fees for big data is $800 and Azure is $600. Now I want to calculate the total revenue that I have earned. Total revenue. Total revenue. How will I calculate this? So that's where I would talk about arithmetic operations, right? I am talking about arithmetic operations right now. Arithmetic operations. This is what I am going to talk about now. Like plus, minus, multiply, divide, all of that. So my total revenue would be big data fee, right? Into how many copies are sold? How many copies are sold? big data enrollments and I will then add what I will add Azure fee into Azure enrollments Azure fee into how many people bought Azure Azure enrollments right and this will give me my total revenue and I can print it print total revenue Right. So this is actually in uh, USD. So I can write the total line like total revenue. I can put it in this curly braces and I can say total revenue is this total revenue is this. Now I will run control R and my total revenue is 40,000 USD. That's great. So this is arithmetic operations. I have shown you multiply. I have shown you plus. Now what all arithmetic operations we can perform? You can perform plus, multiply, minus, divide. Apart from that, you can have modulo. And then if you do this, it, it will give an integer number. I'll show all of this to you. And the precedence, precedence is left to right. That means it goes from left to right. I mean, if system has to read first, it will uh, do this, right? Then it will do this because multiply has a higher priority than plus. So the priority list goes this way. You might have read about board mass when you were in school and all. So multiply and divide are at equal priority plus and minus are at equal priority, right? So priority of plus and minus is lesser than multiply and divide. So first multiplication would happen or a division would happen, then a plus or minus would happen. But if we are adding five numbers, let's like say uh, three numbers, five plus three plus two, then it happens left to right, right? First these two will be added and then these two would be added. Uh, I mean, first these two, then that means eight and then these two, that means 10. 
i hope you kind of got it so in this case since multiply was having a higher priority multiplication happened then this multiplication happened and then the addition of these two happened now you might think okay it's scrolling we have to scroll is there a way we can put it so if you just put it this way this should work right i'll run right this should work i hope this is clear why this is working because we have put it in the du double uh, quotes uh, brackets i mean if you do not put brackets around then it is a issue it will fail it will fail indentation right error so that means even if you put it here and if i run this it says indentation error i hope you got it what i am trying to convey so basically i uh, ideally you can put a, a backslash here to showcase that the next line is in continuation or you can wrap it inside the brackets now if i run this should run because a backslash indicates that okay the next line is in continuation to the previous one so we have written an expression here and i am saying this expression is still continued in the next line right so if we do not want to give this we can just give brackets and that should be fine anything enclosed in brackets it treats as single i hope we are good here okay so i can make a note here right now <clears throat> what i would do is what if i want to find my of average order price i want to find the average order price here what it will be so average order price is the total sales total sales is 40000 usd divided by how many total copies sold right how many total copies sold so average selling price or average order price equal to total sales divided by total copies sold i hope this is clear so let's try finding the average order price so what i would do is instead of total revenue i will say uh, average order price average order price equal to and here i will say big data fee into big data enrollments plus azure fee into azure enrollments and then i can say divided by uh into azure enrollments divided by divided by what divided by total number of enrollments which is big data enrollments plus azure so divided by big data enrollments plus azure enrollments right this is what i have done so if i run this so average order price average order price is and let me just see what does it display average order price is 666.66 right now you might be thinking that okay azure was sold for 600 and this was sold for 800 then it should be 700 no it's not like that because more copies were sold for azure let's say right that means that means it is inclined towards that so but you kind of got an idea about what i am trying to convey how you perform this arithmetic operations around right and uh, let's say uh, for example one thing i want to showcase one thing i want to showcase let me just remove this and if i just say 5 plus 3 into 8 if i just print this what it will be what this will be can you just tell you might think if we might calculate left to right so 5 plus 3 8 8 into 8 uh, is what 64 no first multiplication will take a precedence so 3 into 8 24 24 plus 5 29 right control r 29 i hope this is clear now what if we want to perform 5 plus 3 first 
right i know it as per the precedence multiplication as a higher this thing what if i want to perform 5 plus 3 first then you enclose it inside brackets enclose it inside brackets 5 plus 3 that means now this will happen first and then it will be multiplied by 8 you can see this i hope we are good with this okay just have a look fine now what if we these are simple things i am going quick right what if we say 15 divided by 4 what do you expect as answer 3.75 right 3.75 okay what if i want just 3 as an integer then you can just give this so it will return only the integer part which is 3 i hope this is clear only the integer part now what if we want to get the modulo modulo that means the remainder what is the remainder when 15 is divided by 4 the remainder is 3 so it will give you 3 right it gives you the remainder okay now you kind of got about plus minus multiply divide modulo all of that which is quite straightforward one interesting thing there is this power right 2 power 3 2, 2 to the power 3 what it is 8 right so how to calculate the powers so let's say if i say 2 and how we express is like double multiplication 3 so this is does not mean multiply rather it means 2 to the power 3 which is 2 into 2 into 2 which is 8 let's see 8 now there was this most of the python operators have le left sided binding i have talked about it right which means that calculation of the expression happens left to right which is demonstrated to you but there's one interesting exception to this that whenever you are using power right whenever you are using this exponent right then it is having right side binding that means it starts from the right side i'll just explain that with an example let's say i'm saying 2 to the power 2 to the power 3 now if you think that okay first it calculates this and then it calculates this then 2 to the power 2 is 4 4 to the power 3 is 4 into 4 into 4 64 right but the answer would be different answer is 256 why because it has left sided binding that means first this is calculated 2 to the power 3 is 8 and 2 power 8 is 256 right so right side binding right side binding otherwise generally it is left side for other operators right in such case this 2 is a operand and this is a operator right I hope we are good with this one more thing let's say i am increasing my big data fee by let's say 50 dollars then how will i do big data fee equal to big data fee plus 50 plus 50 right i have not printed anyways i can print Big data fee it will give us give us 850 no big deal but there can be it can be written in a shorthand style by just saying big data fee plus equal to this is a shorthand of writing big data fee equal to big data fee plus 50 there is a repetition coming so that's how this syntax right if i run this it should give me the same answer if i want to multiply by 2 I can just say right into 2 can be done this way this means the same whatever earlier but repetition is not happening I hope this is clear okay so we have understood about the various arithmetic things that are there now there are other math related functions there are other math related functions so let me just remove anyways i have written copied it here right yeah so if i want anyways i can take it let me remove this and this i will keep it for now or let me remove this also now let's say i have total sales total sales 
equal to 20,000.60, 60 paisa, let's say. Now, I want to get the whole number of it. That means I want to take it to a higher integer. That means 20,001. Sometimes we do not want to store decimals and all, right? So what if I want a higher number to this? That means, that means take the ceiling of it. Ceiling means higher value, right? Whole number, higher value. So we can use seal function. And to use that, we can use or use a library called as math. Right? Math, which has this functions. So we have this and then we can say math dot seal. Right? Seal of total sales. Math dot seal of total sales. Right? Let's see. 2000, uh, sorry, 20,001. Right? That's what we expect. Same way, just like seal, we have floor. That means it will round it to 20,000. Right? floor okay and then same way uh, we have some other functions like absolute and all but let me run this so seal gives 20,001 floor gives 20,000 very very straightforward right but I think it can it might be a quick revision for you for now now what if this is let's say minus 20 somehow minus got added right there is a problem with the data and all the numbers are coming with minus let's say right now i can even get the absolute value that means the positive value for this it can remove minus so math dot math dot uh, absolute right f a b s absolute value and total sales now can you tell me what this will give me this should give me 20000.60 what this floor will give us what this floor will give? Floor gives a lower value, right? Lower value, you might think it will become minus 20,000. No, lower value to this is minus 20,001, right? Lesser value because in minus things work differently. And here seal means it gives one higher value, one higher that means minus. So this is minus 20,001 and this will give us minus 20,000. Let's see. We can see this, right? I hope this is clear. Okay, so I will write it. Fine, so let's proceed. Now we will talk about conditional statements. Conditional statements. We have talked about arithmetic operation and some math related functions. There would be a lot of other math related functions, but we can easily find how to find. You can just say math dot what all is available and it's very, I mean, you, you can use them. It's super straightforward. I don't think we should be learning those as such because there would be so many. Okay. Now conditional statements. That means if a condition is true, do this. If the condition is false, please do this. So we, you would have seen if else in other programming languages, same way Python is no different. It also has if else, right? So let's say I want to take a input as number, how much marks someone has got. Let's say input is enter the marks, enter the marks, right? Okay, and I am capturing it inside, let's say, marks equal to this. Now, based on these marks, I have to decide whether a person has failed or not. The condition is if marks are greater than or equal to 35, then pass. Otherwise, fail. That's what I want to print. So, I can say if marks greater than or equal to 35, print pass. Right, you have to give a colon here, colon. And after that, when you type, it is indented this way so that it understands that this particular statement is inside this if. If I put it this way, this becomes wrong. It's not a part of if statement now, right? So indentation is compulsory in Python, right? And then I give else, again a colon. Else is 
if if this statement does not match then it will go to the else part and print whatever it is so print fail now just think of it will it work or not it won't because whatever input i take is string is a text i have to first convert it to a numeric value let me show you it, it won't work if i say i got 40 it will fail right not supported between str and all that means what happened here here what happened whatever i gave marks is a string you are comparing a string with the integer how does it make sense it does not make sense so what you can do is you can cast it to a integer so you can basically say marks equal to int of marks this is what you can do and now this should run now this should run if i type in 40 here it is passed right if i type let's say 30 30 this fail i hope this is clear right okay now instead of putting it here i could have directly put it here it's also feasible i can directly put it here right just have a look we can put it here that should work this should work right and otherwise we could have even put it here this casting whatever i am doing i could have done the casting here also that's also fine all of this will work all of this will work you can see this but i hope you have got that clarity if i put it this way what will happen now what will happen it says indentation error indentation is important see in other languages what generally happen we if you would have worked on java we put it inside these brackets so that it becomes like a block right here it's not that it, it forces the indentation other languages have not made it compulsory other languages say whatever you put inside this i will assume that you are putting it inside if right but here this is optional but indentation is compulsory that you have to give any statement if you give here print pass print let's say you passed right all of this is a part of this particular if statement whatever is here at this indentation level here becomes a part of this particular if statement if this is true all of this will be executed and if this is false all of the things inside else will be executed i hope this makes sense right okay so let's proceed now let's say i want to implement a slightly complex logic where i say okay i understand if marks are greater than or equal to 35 that means i know it's passing but i want to define the grade then and if marks are less than 35 it is failed so here i can say if i mean i'm writing a nested if right if marks are greater than 80 greater than 80 then what i want to say print a grade a grade right and after that i am saying i want to write a ladder of it let's say i want to write or let's say i will say else else uh, print you passed but you didn't secure a grade right i am just writing this so if marks are greater than 80 it will say a grade if marks are let's say 70 it will say you passed but you didn't secure a grade if marks are 30 it will say you fail or fail right let me just run this 70 what do you expect what do you expect not supported instance let me just see again that string thing so we have casted it here right we have casted it here but here also we are putting so better we can cast it here we can just say int right so that we have to cast it only at one place we remove it from here 
Let me run it now. 70. You passed, but you didn't secure a A grade. Again, I will run. Uh, let's say I will say 90. A grade. Again, I will run. Let's say Control R. 30. You failed. Right. So writing a nested if we can go to any level and write this nested if. So how it worked? If marks are greater than 35, it goes into this if statement. And then it checks for this. If marks are greater than 80, it prints this. Else it will print this. Right. Otherwise, if marks are not equal to 35, it won't go inside at all. And it will directly print this. So that's how it is. And we could have structured it even more neatly. I will just show that. We could have structured it even. I just wanted to show you a nested if. This is a nested if. If statement inside another if statement, right? Now, how we can make it without nested? The same thing if I have to write without nested, I can, what, what I can do is, I can write elif. Elif, right? So, if marks are greater than 80 A grade, right? I'll just do this properly. I'll just remove. Okay, if marks are greater than 80, A grade. And instead of just two if statements, we have many, right? So I can say LF. So if the previous statement has not, was not true, it will come here. LF marks, LF marks are uh, greater than or equal to 35. Print print after that whatever this line whatever this line i'll put it you pass but you didn't secure a grade right and after that i will put else else print you failed right so whatever this I am doing, this is exactly the same thing. This is exactly the same thing, but written neatly because there are not uh, this. We have not changed the multiple ifs, right? It's not nested if. So if marks are greater than 80, directly it prints and done. We are done, right? It won't even check the other parts. If this fails, if this fails, then it will check this part. If marks are greater than 35, it will say, okay, you passed but didn't secure a grade. And if this again is false, it will for sure print this. Right? So let me run this. And I will say 90. A grade. Right? Let me run again. 70. You passed but you didn't secure a grade. And again, if this person got 30. You failed. I hope you would have got an idea to this. So basically, elif can only come after if statement, right? I mean, you cannot just start the program with elif. First, if, and it's a ladder of ifs basically, right? So if there are just two things, true or false, only two statements, then if and else. But if you have a ladder of if statements, then this is how it has to be, right? Okay, what if I would have written if here, instead of elif, if I would have written if, what will happen in this case? What will happen in this case? So no matter whether this pass or fail, this if statements are always checked, no matter what. If statements are always checked, no matter what, right? So this is also checked. Even if it is true, this will also be checked. So first, let's say if I give 90 as the input, it will say A grade. And then even it will satisfy this condition. It will say you passed, but you didn't secure a grade. Let me just run this. So if I print 90, it will say a grade because the first if statement is also matched. The second if statement is also matched. I hope you would have got clarity about this. Right? So this should be good enough to understand if and else. I'll just put it here. Okay. So you have understood about 
the conditional statements as well. And we will be seeing many more examples later with proper use cases. But for now, I am just talking about language fundamentals which you should know. Fine. Uh, it's okay then. Now let's say I want to take uh, or you take a assignment. You take two inputs. What you try doing is take two inputs. Take two inputs. One is age. Second is uh, crime record. Crime record. Ask for the user what is your age and is there any crime record against you. Based on that, you decide whether this person is eligible to vote or not. If the age is greater than 18, right, and there is no criminal record, no criminal record, then that person is eligible to vote. Otherwise, that person is not eligible to vote. You can try writing it using if else. Very, very straightforward. Right. But here in this case, we have to use a logical operator. Logical operators are and we have already seen arithmetic, right? Arithmetic, what all we have seen in this? Plus, minus, multiply, divide, this one, power, modulo. This is what we have seen. Now I am saying we have logical operators where we have and or not. These are the ones, right? So let's say if there are two conditions, condition one and and condition two, right? If both the conditions are true, then only it will get true. So true and true will give you true. Let's say if there is a, one more condition, condition three, right? If all the conditions are true, then only true. If all the conditions are true, then the statement or then the expression evaluates to true. Right? I hope this is clear. So, if I have to show this to you, if I have to show this, I will just show. Um, let me remove that. Let's say if I say print true. true and false. In true and false, you have to make sure T and F is caps, right? Because these are Boolean. So you cannot just, just type true. This is not that one, right? True and false. So let's say if I say true and false, what is the answer? What is the answer? It will give false because one of the expression is false, right? One of the expression is false. So let me just run this false but if it was true it would give me true on the other hand for or for let's say if there are three conditions here condition one condition two condition three and we are having a or if anyone is true it evaluates to true if any of the conditions is true then the expression evaluates to true for example if i say true or right so or is again uh, this thing operator logical operator and i say true and false what will it give it will give true right it will give true so for example, I mean, whatever assignment I have given, let, let me only show that to you so that you get an idea actually. You can also try that, but it's quite straightforward. I will take the input from the user. Let's say age equal to, age equal to, I will say input, please enter the age. Please enter the age, right? And I will convert it to integer. Because by default, it will not be an integer, it will be a string, right? I'm wrapping it inside an integer and I'm printing crime record, right? Crime record equal to input and are there any criminal records? Yes or no? Are there any 
criminal records against you yes or no only two things we have to type right and these two inputs will be taken anyways this is coming as string so that is fine now i will write this i'll write if if age greater than or equal to 18 if age greater than or equal to 18 and crime record and crime record equal to equal to that means we are comparing equal to equal to no right no then we print print eligible to vote eligible to vote else print you are not eligible to vote you are not eligible to vote I will run this okay I will check the syntax else this thing we have to give and here I'll just give some space so that we can easily type in the values control R please enter the age 30 are there criminal records no eligible to vote if I run it again uh, age 16 criminal records no you are not eligible to vote right so here we are using a uh, this thing operation you can have a look right this is a logical operator and where both if both of them are true it will give us true on the other end if this was let's say or ideally logically it should not be or here but if it is or if any of them is true it is true so let's see age is 30 this one itself is true but there are criminal records still it will say you are eligible to vote right so i hope you would have got this and uh, we have not operator uh, so for example if i say if not age less than not age less than 18 it, it is the same way of saying age greater than or equal to 18 right so this will work the same way and I will let's say give a end here. So I am saying age should not be greater than 18 and crime there, is, there should not be any criminal records. Right. That's what I am trying to say. Now if I say age 30 and criminal records no, it's say eligible to vote. Same thing. So not means it reverses this. So age less than 18, let's say I am giving 30. Right. It becomes false but not will make it true. Right. So age greater than 30, this will evaluate to true. I hope this is clear. So these three are the logical operators that you should know. And or not. Okay. So this is fine. And here we have used comparison operators also like equal to, equal to, less than, greater than or equal to. These are comparison operators. So what operators we have talked about? We have talked about arithmetic, we have talked about logical, we have talked about comparison related where we have talked about equal to equal to, it can be not equal to or less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, all of it. So these are basic operators which are there in every programming actually, right? But some of the things can be different. For example, this power can be different way in other language or even this can be different, all of that. Okay. So we are good, right? Now, let's say we have name variable and name is, let's say, Sumit Mittal, my name, right? Now, if I say print, I want to check whether Sumit is inside this, whether it is contained inside this name variable or not. How will I check? Print Sumit in name. Sumit in name. Is it true or false? It will be false because it is a capital S, it is lower S. Let me just show you that. False. But if I make it capital, it will be true. Right? Basic, basic things. But you should know. Right? Same way, it, we can say not in name. 
let's say sumit not in name this is true right because this particular thing or let's say kapil not in name this is true because it's not there that's correct right okay so now let's talk about working with strings very important let's see about string related operations working with strings strings right fine let's get started with this now what is a string what is a string string is nothing but a sequence of characters sequence of characters is called as a string a sequence of characters now you can enclose a string inside double quotes you can even enclose it inside single quotes and you can even enclose it inside triple quotes like this now you might be thinking why i mean why so many different options any purpose for that or just simply there is a purpose for everything right so that's how there are three different options to define a string and why i say sequence because if let's say the string is let's say sumit now if you say it's a ordered collection a sequence because if you do not maintain that sequence if you say u s m i t it's not the same thing so it's a ordered sequence right it's a ordered sequence so let me show you why there are three ways for example let's say if i am defining a name equal to and i am giving a double quote so let's say uh, let's say i am saying sumit's class or sumit's training is really good now you might be thinking that i myself am saying that my training is good people say that okay yeah so if i would be let's say i am using a apostrophe here right then if i am using apostrophe like a single quote if i try to enclose it inside a single quote then wherever the first single quote came it will feel that this is a string and it will not recognize this right it it will not recognize the other part so here if you could have enclosed it inside this double quotes it would have made sense and it will not give you that error i can print the name here print name right so this training is really good now what if i want to for for example let's say i uh, for some reason i want to use a double quote inside but then i am wrapping inside double quote the string got over here it won't recognize all of this right so there you can put it inside a single quote if you have double quote inside you can wrap it inside a single quote now if i run this again this gives me the answer what if i let's say have both single quote and double quote let's say i have this also or, or let's say this as well then what i can do i can use a backslash to escape this character it it is like a escape character right i can use a backslash saying that okay the next is a escape character right if i run this it should give me both of this so we have escape character also that way i hope this is clear now what if my string spans multiple line let's say sumit training is good and and let's say in next line i am saying and he offers big data training right i will remove this also um, i do not want this and let's say i put it inside single quotes will this work will this work no it won't it it won't if i run it will give me an error right so whenever my string is spanning multiple lines i could give it inside triple quotes like this and i can put it even you remember multi line comment can also be given this way actually the multi line comment is a trick th that is actually a string itself but we do not assign it to something right so if i do not assign it to something it becomes like a comment this becomes like a comment right 
I hope this is clear. Now if I print this, it gives me all of this. But it also considers whatever space and all that you have given. So you can remove this space, right? I hope this is clear. Now otherwise, if you want to print it in a new line that way, you can give backslash n. That's another escape character, right? So for example, I give in a double quote, I give in a double quote and I say backslash n, right? That also prints in a new line. That's an escape character again, backslash n. I hope this is clear. What is backslash t? Backslash t, it stands for a tab. You can see this is a tab, right? So we have seen three escape sequences also backslash. After that, if you have apostrophe or uh, that means it, it treats it like that. So backslash we have I shown backslash n backslash t, right? As and when more are required, we can see that. But that's what it is majorly. So that's about it. So you have seen why there are three ways of defining a string. These are the three ways. Okay. Now let's talk about string related operations. String related operations. This is interesting and this is important stuff as well. Okay. Now there are a lot of operations. I have already shown you earlier that how do we concatenate two strings. For example, if I say input first name, right, and input, input, ideally you should not give a space, it should work, but still, uh, last name, and then I will say print, so, f name equal to this l name equal to this and print your name is first name or i'll just say first name plus last name first name plus last name oh, sorry f name and l name right f name l name this is like a concatenation right this is like a concatenation it adds two strings right and you could have given a space you could have given a space by doing this right it, it should work you know that we have seen it earlier also okay so this is about string concatenation concatenation we have seen that already now we can even find length of a string so for example i will say first name equal to sumit or uh, let's say let's say i will give some name here uh, sumit mittal name equal to okay now what i will do is i will i can find the length of it length of str length of string whatever so i can say name here and this should print the length of it i can print it i can print it what's the length five even the space is the length 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Roughly 12, I believe. Uh, 12. So this way you can find the length of a string. Right? Very straightforward. And uh, this is a very generic function. You can find the length of a uh, list, a tuple. Later you will see all of those types, but for now I'm saying length is a very general function okay now there are two main operations in uh, string related operations which are indexing indexing and slicing 
indexing and slicing are two main operations in string right so indexing helps to get a particular character let's say you want to get the fourth character you can get it right from a string slicing gives you a piece of it right helps to get a slice right that means let's say you want to get the last five characters so that's a slice of this not just one character right so helps helps to get a slice okay so this is fine now i will just show that practically let's say i get some order status from a my text file order status and the order status is complete order let's say there are multiple order status closed order complete order pending order all of that so i got pending uh, complete space order as the order status from my data file right now what if let's say i want to print a third index to it so index always starts from zero so this is zero one two three right so if i want to print the third index order status order status and i give this square brackets and three so it will give me the fourth character in this that is p let me just show you that p right index starts from zero index starts from zero even in java it starts from zero even in c language it starts from zero right yeah now what if so basically this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now the last one if I, let's say I do not know the length of this string and I want to print the last character, then I can give minus 1. Minus 1, that means again, if you have to see that way, this is minus 1, this is minus 2, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, like that. So if someone asks you to print the last character then this minus kind of index works very well right because you do not know that this is 13 characters long and you should ask for 13th index you can say minus 1 because that's the last character and it gives you r right it gives you r what if i print minus 2 second last character it, it will give me e right fine even if you go from here 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If you would have put 12 right, it would have given you E only. Right? But how do you know it's at, you want second last, then how do you know you have to put 12? What's the length of this string, right? So that's how this works. So it helps you give one character at a particular index. Now, Let's say you want to change something at one particular index. You want to say order status, order status and let's say instead of this space you want to put underscore. So what is this position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, right? Instead of this 8, at this position 8, you think that you want to put instead of space you want to put underscore. So you want something like complete underscore order, right? This is what you want, right? Is it possible? Is it possible? Let's see. If I print print order status, what will happen? This will fail because string is immutable. You cannot change the string. So all the string related operations you are trying you are accessing it reading from it right but you cannot change the existing things right i'll write it here string is immutable you cannot make modifications to the string if you want to make modifications you create a new string and put the modifications there but in the existing one you cannot make any changes right just have a look at it very very important point to understand fine okay so you understood about indexing and all that's fine let me talk about 
slicing now let me talk about slicing slicing you want to get a piece of it rather than one character let's say so for example order status is complete order what i want to do is i just want to get the first uh, uh, let, let's say i just want to print complete how can i do that i can say print print order status order status again you give these kind of brackets right from which index you want to start you want to start from a zeroth index right starting of this and till what character you want to print so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 what if you print till 7 so this 0 is included but 7 is not included that is excluded so it will print all the things before 7 that means it will print the 0th index first second third fourth fifth and sixth but it won't print the seventh index so it will print c o m p l e t it won't print this e here let me just show that to you i hope this is clear right now now let's say i want to print print this particular order thing so it starts from ninth index right ninth index so i can say 9 and 9 2 if you see r would be 14 9 10 11 12 13 and 13 if i put 13 r will not be printed i if i want to print r also i will give 14 right one more right so now if i print it will give me order correct okay now what if i want to print this entire word i do not know what's the size so instead of 14 i can even say i'll remove this i can instead of 14 because i do not know what's the length of this i know from which word this is starting like 9 but i do not know what's the length so i can just call the function length of order status length of order status right and this should give me order right for order status starting from 9 till the length if you want to do it again properly you can say length equal to this and then you can just say length right a more modular way of doing the same thing i hope we are good with this okay now what if i do not even give this let's let me remove the length part let me remove the length part what if i just say 9 colon this what does it mean it means print till the end start from 9 but print till the end so it will print again the same thing which is order right and if i let's say do not give here and i give let's say 8 that means it's saying start from the beginning and print till 8th but 8th is not included so it will print complete right now what if so basically if you miss the first thing it assumes it starts from 0 if you miss the last thing it assumes that we have to print till the end right and if you miss both the things it assumes that you are starting from 0 and printing till the end so it's as good as printing order status fully right it will print that I hope this makes sense. What if someone asks you, can you print, think of it, print the last five characters. Print the last five characters. Pause the video and think how you can do it. Pause the video and think how you can do it. I'll tell you. Thought? Okay. If you have to print the last five characters, then here negative index will help minus 5 that means you have to start from there till till what place till the end right if i put it like this let's say what does it show right or even i can here say length of order status whatever in multiple ways i can do this so that's where negative index helps us right just have a look so this is how you print the last five characters so what if 
what if i want to print everything after the space i i want to print everything after the space how will i do that print print everything after the space space is here how will i do what i will do is i can use another function to find where space is what is the index of space how will i find i can say index equal to index equal to i can say order status order status dot find that means in this order status i want to find space and if there are multiple spaces it gives me the first occurrence of it right that what's the index position of the first occurrence that that it will tell me and it will give me that index for example if i print this this will give me uh, whatever wherever this space is the index of this so once i get this index what i have to do what i would have to do uh let me just remove this what i would have to do i would take this index and say index plus 1 because index is for space right i want to start from the next index and i want to print till the end i want to print till the end that's how i can print everything after the space let me just show you that and it prints that so multiple ways you should know these things because when cleaning the data when extracting the data and manipulating that these are very very important how you slice it how you use indexing and so on right in data engineering data analyst or even data as a data scientist whenever you are doing this operations these are quite important that's why i am focusing on this more right what if if you want to print the first word first word before the space right print the first word how you will do that so index equal to order status dot find space right after that you want to start from zero till till what point you want to run so we have got that index of this right so we want to run till here because this is anyways not included and it will print everything before the space so this will give me complete right so the use case for this could be let's say you have let's say I, i'll just show you that and this is how the file is order id order date order customer id order status and you see last one column is order status which is closed pending payment complete closed but let's say there was some problem and you got something like closed order right after everything this order word is included but that's not relevant for you in your calculation because order status is either closed pending payment complete but somehow that additional word is also coming closed order right Pe uh, complete order complete order so if this word is coming how will you remove that from your this as part of your cleanup right so this can be really really important i hope this makes sense to you right okay i'll just open this pie charm again fine so this would be good now let's say let's say what i will get if i say i want to print from minus 5 to minus 1 what it will give you order because what is minus 5 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 that means o r d e right so minus 1 is this one so it won't print all the things before this it will print o r d e right okay now here there is one more thing there is something called as if you give the third parameter let's say you say i want to start from 1 i want to go up to 9 right what it will print it will start from 1 and it prints this line step by step right but what if i want to skip every second character right i want to skip by default this size is 1 that it prints everything but what if i give 2 here step size that means so first it 
starts with O and then it skips one and then print P, then it skips one, it print E like that. So let's see. O P E E, right? How it's print this P E E, right? Same way you can give it three here also like that. So this is step size. This is step size. By default, if you do not give, this is one. Now let me ask you a very interesting problem. Okay. Can you, using this, can you reverse a string? Reverse a string using this. Reverse a string. Is this doable? Can you reverse a string and print that? So what you can do? First two, I am not giving anything. That means it's string that it's starting from the starting till the end. And step size minus one. Step size minus one. Don't you feel it will print the entire string backwards, right? Backwards, it will print everything, right? C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E-O-R-D-E-R, -E -E right? It has printed it backwards. Step size is minus one, actually. Okay. Fine. So this is the reversed text. Now, uh, I was talking about find, right? I was talking about find. So let's say if I say order, if I say order status dot find something which is not available, order status dot find. Why I'm putting it inside double quotes? Not required. Find. Let I want to find e. There are two e's available here. There are two e. E and E, which or three E's are here, which one it will give the index of? It will give me the index of the very first occurrence of this, right? So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This should print 5, right? The first occurrence of it. What if I try printing S, uh, I mean try finding S inside this? S does not exist. S does not exist. So how it will take care of that? S it will give me minus one. So find will give minus one in case if this character does not exist. So I will just make a note here. Where is my notepad? Notepad is here. So I will just write uh, find returns the first or the index of first occurrence. Right? index of first token if not found returns minus one returns minus one there is another way to do that if you can find the index by using this index also right if i give e here it will return same five same way it works that way but if it does not exist like in case of s it will throw an error exception i mean we'll get to know what I mean by exception but it throws an exception substring not found but in case of your find it was giving minus one so i'll write it here uh, so talking about uh, index returns the index of first occurrence if not found if not found throw exception Right? That's what we have seen. Now, there are a lot of other uh, functions like ends with, capitalize. Uh, I'll quickly show, but these are very, very straightforward. So, for example, let's say I will say print. Very, very straightforward actually. Order status dot. I want to check whether this ends with a particular thing. Ends with and let's say i am giving ends with order which is true or not yes it is true like i am saying whether this particular string ends with the order true or not yes it is so after that we can have a capitalize also which capitalizes the first word so for example uh, here i will say print print order status dot capitalize 
capitalized. That means it will increase this uh, uh, two capital letters, right? Complete order. So there would be many such functions available. How you can check? You can check those actually. You can just say order status dot, and it gives you all the string related, right? Index, find, capitalize, ends with strip. Strip will remove the leading spaces, right? If there is a space, for example, uh, let's say this, and even this, leading and trailing spaces are there. And if you print, you were printing this, right? So let's see. So when you were printing, you were getting this spaces here and spaces here. So how you can remove this space? You can say uh, print, print order status dot and i can say strip so it will remove all the left side spaces or and right side spaces you can see the third one this has removed this right this has removed and if you want to remove the left side space you can uh, say left strip right left one l strip it removes spaces from the left, but it has spaces at the right. You can see here. It has spaces at the right. Same way I can use R strip so that it removes the spaces from the right. Like this one. Very, very straightforward. Right? Now there is even one function called as replace. Replace, which replaces all the occurrences of a thing with some other thing. For example, if I have to use order status dot replace right and what to replace with what let's say i say complete i want to replace with completed here sorry uh, completed right so wherever it will find complete it will replace it with completed but it's not doing in the same string, right? We are just printing and we can capture it inside some other string if we want, but we cannot mutate the string, right? Very, very important point to remember. So complete is changed to completed. And if this complete word is occurring 10 times, at all the places it will be changed actually, right? I hope this makes sense. So we have seen all of that. Now, uh, I just want to highlight one thing that right now we are seeing basic data types, right? Basic in the sense which hold one value, basic data types, where we have seen int, float, bool, right? What else we have seen? We have seen string, all of that we have seen. Now, what I want to tell is, even we have seen none, all of this hold one value right none does not hold any but none of them hold more than one value as such now even if you think that okay sumit mittal you might think sumit sir this is holding two values no it's still one string one string this is one thing only one object right now there are so basically these are normal things but string still holds some characters characters that's why i say it's a sequence, sequence of characters because the sequence matters. And there are some other data types which or, or some other data structures that we will learn. Data structures that we will learn later, right? But I want to just talk about it very minutely as of now. We have list, we have tuple, we have range, we have uh, again string. I will put to this part why I will tell you. And then we have dictionary, uh, dictionary and uh, dictionary and then we have set right so we have these kind of data structures but we have not talked about it these are little more advanced than what we are doing because list tuple range all of this hold more than one value it's a list of values it holds right same way dictionary holds more than one value set holds more than one value so these are data structures which hold more than one value but these data structures are characterized into sequence type and non-sequence type. So whatever I have written here are sequence type. Because the sequence is important. Important, you cannot change the ordering. 
but when you talk about a dictionary and set you the sequence is not important is not important that means the order is not relevant at all you can have one item first or at the end does not matter right so for example list looks something like this four five six eight so it's a list of four numeric values tuple is hold inside this right now i do not intend to teach list tuple range str list and tuple are super super important which i will cover in extreme depth later but i just want to highlight this for now right so this is a tuple range can be again let's say a range of from 0 to 9 all numbers from 0 to 9 can be one range and string you already know let's say sumit mitter all of this sequence matters here you cannot replace 5 initially because we try to get the data by index index of 2 now we cannot change these values and shuffle it around so that when we try to get the data using index it gives a different result no sequence is important but when you talk about a dictionary or a set here let's say a set of three values let's say uh, uh, i say cricket hockey basketball right so here the order is not important because i will never be using indexing on this I, it, it is not accessible by index as such because ordering is not important right even dictionary is a set of key values just like you have a word a key and corresponding value just like your english dictionary right i'll talk more about it but i just want to highlight about these things right so these are the things now i have talked about escape characters already right now let's say let's say i have shown you the orders file right i let's say get this kind of input i read a text file and i got this kind of input right i am getting this kind of input like i am using any framework and i am reading a file and i am getting this now let's say i capture it inside orders df do not worry what is df generally when we read it in pyspark we use data frame or even pandas right yeah so this will be coming like a string together because you read from a text file and each line is a string right each line is a string so this will come like this in a variable whatever it is so right now if you just print this string this string is one complete thing it's not separated but how can you perform something let's say if i want to if i want to get the fourth column if i want to get the fourth column there are four columns right then i might think this is zero this is one this is two this is three so this is order id timestamp customer id and order status now if i say print order df of one or order df of three because then i should get this right what i will get what i will get this is orders df it gives me zero why because this is zero one two and three right so three is nothing but at third index we have zero because entire thing is treated like a string right but that is what not i i was not intending that i was thinking that we have this one value we have this second value we have this third value and we have this fourth value so how do i treat it that way what i can do is orders df orders df dot i can use a split function split split by default if you do not give anything it will split based on spaces but in my case i want to split it based on based on a comma my split condition is based on a comma not on a space right and i will say orders new df orders new df equal to right now if i print this print let's see now it is printing a list now we have got a list actually from one string we have split it based on comma and we have got a list of four values how to confirm that it's a list if you hover on this 
it says str here string if you hover on this it says list of strings how many strings right now four strings now what if i want to print the so how i can refer these strings inside this list this is zero this is one this is two and this is three so i can just say of three this will help me to get the order status right that's how we do we kind of retrieve the columns and then crunch those in our data engineering and all i hope this would have made some sense to you right okay so you kind of got that you have understood about uh, strip also let's say if we had after this comma a lot of spaces right and as part of your cleanup you want to get the last column the order status right and you want to remove this spaces also then you can say dot strip right it will remove that spaces you can see there is no space so that's how data cleaning data cleaning is a very very important activity in python whatever language functions are there those are super super important in order to do that right okay now what if i it, it's given that okay uh, sometimes this order status comes in upper case sometimes lower case we want to standardize that right we want to standardize then we can even use one more function we can just say dot uh, upper or lower let's say we can say dot lower and we can change these functions right one after the other dot lower and if i run this it will be converted to a lower case so that we standardize all this so that later when we are doing aggregations and all it becomes easy so same way just like we have lower we have upper also you can try that out so with this i think i should uh, end the session by the way i am sure that you would have loved this session and if you truly enjoyed it do like this video subscribe to my channel and that would be a good enough motivation for me to come up with new topics in the upcoming sessions so do show your support do show your love because i am putting my best efforts in order to get this playlist to a level where it is even better than the paid playlist right or paid courses so with this let me end the session and i hope you would have truly enjoyed that in our next session we will come up with more interesting things thanks a lot